So it looks like Leela doesn't get a funeral? And yes, I know there's a funeral being held for somebody there, but here's the truth of the matter. This is not a funeral that the parents are holding for Leela. This is a funeral that they're holding for someone who never really existed. This is a funeral being held for their son, a person that they believed existed, a person who may have believed that they were that at one point, but they learned that they weren't, or maybe they knew it all along. And we have Leela. That's who we're dealing with. This person is named Leela. And to bury your child with the wrong name, a lie of a name, because you can't face what your child really is, who she really is, is despicable. But I already went through most of my vitriol before, and this is not to condemn everybody. This particular crime rests on the parents, not just Leela's parents, but the other parents who are also doing the same things, disowning their gay children, you know, refusing to acknowledge the change in their transgender child, refusing to have over the boyfriend of their son for dinner, all of them. These are the parents that drive their children away, drive their children to suicide, and destroy their self-confidence because they aren't comfortable with who these people are. But for the rest of us who haven't already fallen down this pit of judgment, we can take something from this because we all suffer this pain to a point, whether we know it or not. Most of us can't 100% be ourselves. And it's not just about the LGBT community or whatever. It's about the expectations we place upon other people when they're different from us. Whether they're black, white, Latino, man, woman, child, poor, rich, all of these divisions, all of these facets of a condition that is humanism, <laughs> that we point to and say that's different. And then we draw different expectations and conclusions of the same person because we have new information about them. That is where we are all limited and held back and restrained. Because if you're a black person, I'm sure you'll know what I'm talking about when I say that you have different expectations of your actions and character and ability placed on you just because you're black. Just the same for being a man or a woman. You are a man. You're expected to like sports, basically. You're expected to have auto-mechanical knowledge. You're expected to be at least somewhat handy. Sure, it's become sort of a cultural joke of the non-handy man. But yes, it's a cultural joke. It's not a cultural truth. It, it's sort of that, look at Homer Simpson, he can't do anything right. Because it's funny, because we see it as an incongruity from the real condition. Which it is not. That's the thing. Homer Simpson is no worse at being a man than anyone else. Because the term is meaningless. Beyond, does he have a physical set of genitalia down there? And does he identify mentally as gender as male? Are these both checked? Then he's a man. End of discussion. The fact that we place further requirements, distinctions, and expectations on people based on these arbitrary things is pretty, not just ridiculous, but limiting to all of us because, in essence, all of us fall somewhere on any of these spectrums, all of them somewhere. You can be a socially affluent white male. People will have certain expectations of your action, your character, your ability, and what you're going to do based purely upon those facts taking into consideration none of who you are, what you've actually done, or any of that. No, you're now the rich white man who must be greedy, selfish, and jealous, who must hate poor people. Like, this is just now who you are. Or the poor black person who's probably all up on welfare, stealing the government money and smoking weed and just not giving a shit and not looking for work, that lazy bastard. But these all exist, all of these stereotypes that we place upon people and then punish them for deviating from them. Oh, well, why don't black people get a job? Well, maybe it has something to do with the fact that you expect them to not get a job and automatically look askance at any of them trying to get a job because you expect a scam. Maybe the poor people can't get more rich because once they're poor, people treat them as though they are always poor. It doesn't matter what they're doing, how they're trying to better themselves. Oh, you're poor. You must be lazy. You must be shitty at work. You must be a welfare queen. You must just not care. So we're not going to give you a chance because we expect you to fuck it up. So you don't get the chance. If you're a black person, you don't get to be better than the racist stereotypes because it doesn't matter if you are. You're judged by those things anyway. 
You're poor, you're judged by that metric no matter what you do. You're rich, you're judged by that metric no matter what you do. Do you detect the theme? I hope so, because everybody is oppressed by this. The fact that you can be a man and be ridiculed and beaten for wearing a dress, regardless of why you wear the dress, is revolting. It's oppressive. You can wear pants, but you can't wear a dress, but they're both made of the same material. Like, it is a completely absurd distinction based entirely upon made up social hierarchies and expectations that we have created for each other, and then played this game of rigidly keep everybody in their box. Yeah, sure, I might be particularly annoyed by it based on my own take in this situation, but you should be too. Straight, gay, man, woman, child, adult, it doesn't matter. You should look at the world and say, wait, whether I fit in my box or not, the fact that I have to fit in this box pisses me off. That's what people should be saying. Why do I have to fit in this particular distinctive box defined by some random motherfuckers a long time ago? Why can't I do this thing that makes me happy? Why can't I be a guy that likes Barbie dolls? Why can't I be a girl that plays with G.I. Joe? Why can't I be a poor person that is happy being poor, who works hard to my particular preferences, and I'm just happy in my condition? Why can't you be things that are contradictory to the labels you wear? Really, I'm asking you, why can't you and why should that be a bad thing? That's really the important question. Look at yourself and whether you fit in the box or not, whether you think other people should fit in the box or not, take a moment and ask yourself, why? Why should they fit in these boxes? And if the only answer you can come up with is because that's the way it is, then immediately understand that that's not a fucking answer. At one point, people let blood because that's the way health worked. We got smarter than that shit, though, didn't we? And stopped doing it because it was stupid. Well, that's not the only set of ideas, technology, that should evolve. We should evolve society, our understanding of ourselves, each other, our place in it, the way we interact with each other, what we do to each other and what we do with each other. All of this can and should evolve. What we expect from each other should not be based on some rigid hierarchical standard created by who the fuck knows what now at this point, if anyone can even tell me who first defined these standards and why they exist at all. Because, you know, there's that now famous picture of FDR in a dress. Because at one point, dresses were okay to be worn by children, boy or girl. Why did the standard change and why do we suddenly pretend like it was always that way? Huh? Strange that, isn't it? Wait, so at one point, Boys could wear dresses, and this was not even strange. This, oh, you're gonna make your child a pussy. This wasn't even a thing. Look at fucking FDR. You tried to tell me that. Look at the man, and then try to tell me, oh, he's a pussy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, do, do a tenth of what he did. Then talk to me. But I think the point stands. Really, these traditions, as they are, have no basis in reality. They have no basis in what should be, but simply what is. And should we stand for what is being what always will be? Whether it's technology, whether it's religion, whether it's human relationships? No. We should find what works, what's best for everyone, what makes people function, what makes them thrive and grow together to become better. Isn't that what we should all be working towards? Is the betterment of everyone, including ourselves and those around us? If you can honestly disagree with me on that, then... <sighs> I don't know what to tell you, except good luck, <laughs> because I don't know how you're going to function in the world. But for the rest of us who are willing to look at this and say, yeah, you know, maybe I don't like this group of people. Maybe I think that they do these things that you say they don't. But at the very least, maybe I should look into it a little more. Maybe I should see what this is about. And if that's all you do, good on you. You've changed something important right there. Even if you still look at it and say, well, I generally think most poor people are lazy, but, you know, some of them do get a hard time. You know what? That's a step. It's one tiny step in the right direction, and if a million people make a million tiny steps, the world's a little better. If everybody can at least look at each other and say, you know, I'm going to try to not hate you. We can get somewhere. might not be a much. You might say, oh, you're aiming really low, but you know what? Everywhere, everything starts somewhere. And if we can all just look at each other and if nothing else, say, you know what, I'm not going to hate you. I might not like you. I might not like what you do. I might not want to be around you. I might not even want to think about you. But you know what? I'm not going to hate you and I'm not going to trouble your existence for no reason.
we just stopped it right there and took that one step, the world would be a much better, more peaceful and happy place for everyone. And really, who can not want that? Not just for yourself, but for everyone around you. Because even in the most selfish aspect you could possibly think of, everybody being happier and allowed to do their own thing kind of keeps them out of your way, doesn't it? Fine, you don't want to deal with transgender people. Stop fucking with them. Give them the basic human rights that anybody deserves and let them go on their way. They're not going to be in your face about it. They'll be busy doing their own shit then because they can. Really simple. If people leave you alone to do what you want to do, do you just go fuck with them because, no, not really. I would think not. You're not going to because you're doing your own shit. You're building your own life now because you have the freedom to do it. I think that might be something to think about.